This is Judith Lay welcoming you to the podcast of this week's edition of At Your Service. The Nation Station, Manx Radio. Praying the Keels Week started yesterday. In a few moments, we'll find out what's on offer over the coming days, and we'll reflect on some thoughts from the Venerable Patricia Hillis, who on Thursday was announced as the next Bishop of Soder and Man, successor to the Right Reverend Peter Eagles, who retired last autumn. But first, a moment to reflect on the special feast that'll be celebrated in many Christian churches today. Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples – that small group of followers who'd been so close to Jesus during his time on earth, had seen all the good that he'd done, had watched him die a savage and unjust death, and then met him as he rose again, a witness to the everlasting life that God offers to all who follow him. But 40 days later, when Jesus went back to his Father in heaven, those first disciples were left with the awesome responsibility of establishing the early church and spreading the gospel. They were frightened, fearful that they too might die for challenging the teachings of the religious leaders of the time. Then the Holy Spirit, the power from God that Jesus had promised them, came upon them. We're told it looked like tongues of fire settling on them, and they became fearless, passionate in spreading the gospel, and despite all opposition and persecution, founded a church which over 2,000 years later reaches every corner of the earth and continues to touch and transform lives. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe your life into my willing soul. i 
Reverend Kristen Getty and Holy Spirit Breathe New Life in Me. Praying the Keels Week, now in its 19th year, started yesterday and over the next seven days offers a programme of walks plus a talk by historian Peter Kelly and a coach trip. Praying the Keels Week is organised by a group drawn from different church backgrounds and aims to encourage people to visit some of the island's keels, remains of sacred early chapels dotted around the island. Catherine Waring and Phil Crane are members of the team who've planned this week and they join me now. Catherine, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Now, Praying the Keels Week, what is it? Well, it's a week where we spend time in sacred places. And when I say sacred places, it's like the ancient Celts would have described the Keels as thin places. This probably was about 200 on the island years ago, but there's probably about 35 now, which we try and visit in a regular cycle. And we walk and we look at nature, we look at history, there's some reflection, and we talk. We talk and we make friends and... uh, really just look at the world through through our own eyes and through God's eyes. The special thing about this week is that some of these sacred places, these sites of ancient keels, are on private land that wouldn't normally be yeah. accessible. Now, is it really open to everyone? Yes, we try and do different levels of ability. So the two Saturdays are more the longer walks, but we have different things during the week. We're going to Ramsey on Monday to have a walk around the square. We've also got things like a coach trip, so for people who don't do walking but still want to go around and see things. And we've also got shorter walks in the evening for people who work. What are you particularly looking forward to this week? Oh, well, I am looking forward to the Friday evening, really. That's the appeal. And we're hoping to bless the uh, the new lifeboat there, but also to get into the old cathedral and look at the old sites, the kind of sacred sites on St. Patrick's Island, so the keep, the chapel and the old cathedral where we're hoping to do a bit of Teze. Um, we've also got uh, Kerjan Kujan singing with us on Tuesday evening up at Jerby. They've got some interesting new crosses that they've actually found up there. I'm not sure if they're going to be available for us to see. They're waiting to get an exhibition thing. But certainly up on the Tuesday evening up at St. Patrick's Church, that's going to be special.
before the heavens had been formed, before the bright angels were created, what was in existence? Beautiful music there from Kirjin Kujak, who'll be singing in Jerby Church on Tuesday evening as part of the Kiel Walk there. The evening starts at 7 o'clock at Jerby Church and includes a walk to Kiel Kickle. Hot drinks and cakes will be provided in the church, but please bring along a packed supper for yourself. I think there are a lot of places on the island that we know as visual landmarks. St. Patrick's Isle is Mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. And we also know Jerby Church. It's a landmark if you look to the north of the island. But there's so much more to these places that perhaps we don't know. And it's to feel the atmosphere, to feel that kind of thin place that's been there where people have met and prayed and talked and shared their woes and shared whatever their lives was going on. It just makes it special. It makes it moving. You kind of get in touch with your ancestors. But uh, also so you move closer to, to nature, to God, to the universe. And we don't often get a chance to go to these places. It's a special week. All the churches contribute. It's an ecumenical thing. And we just love it. And this is our 19th year, so we're hoping to make it to our 20th. I don't see any reason at all why you wouldn't make it to your 20th. You're a very vibrant committee. Over the years, you mm-hmm. brought in different people and everybody who comes into it brings a different idea. Uh, but at the core of it, you've always had people who are very knowledgeable mm. about these keel sites. You know, you've had some highly respected mm. historians who've added to the story over the years, like Frank Cowan yeah. and Peter Kelly's involved this year. Yeah. The other thing that it seems to me that you do each year is to set a theme. Have you got a theme for this year? We do. Our theme this year is the sea. And you'll see some of that theme coming out, as in the lifeboat. In fact, why not join us tonight? We're actually going to be walking from Moran Primary School car park to St. Runius Parish Church to listen to the Mariners Choir. It's going to be a great evening. I think there's even refreshments and you know what the cakes are like. Oh, I'm out of this world. A Mariners Supper? Oh, indeed. And with the choir to boot. So that's the theme. We're walking from well to well at the final Saturday from St. Catherine's well to the well in St. Mary's at Port St. Mary, which we haven't done before. So that's another exciting thing to be looking at. And not, not a bad walk. And you said earlier, quite rightly, the, the walks are very different. Yes. Some of them are quite short and, and, and not particularly challenging. And, but the leaflet makes it very clear. Yes. So if people are interested in the coach trip, in any of the walks, where's the best place? Where is the best place for them to find the information, Catherine? Go to your local church. There should be leaflets there. Or look on our website. Our Facebook is also quite active during the week. So you'll find all the events on the Facebook page, but leaflets in churches and in some of the cafes as well. It's open to everybody. We welcome everybody. Just turn up at the time and you're guaranteed a good time. Do have a look at the walk and dress appropriately. Oh, yes. You know, if if you're setting out on a walk and it looks a bit showery, then bring appropriate clothing and and some decent footwear. Definitely. And also beware of dogs must be also kept on a lead. Yeah. Because some of the walks take you onto farmland, don't and they? And private land, yeah. Yeah. So dogs on a lead. Yeah. At all times. Yeah. So no charge and no need to pre-book any of the walks. Just arrive at the start wearing suitable clothing and footwear. However, it is necessary to book the coach trip this coming Wednesday evening, as you'll imagine places are limited. The start and return point is the Promenade Methodist Church here in Douglas, and the cost, including a light supper at Mackled Parish Church, is £20 per person. To book, ring 833 154. That's 833 154. And the website, which has full details of the programme for this week, is prayingthekeels.org. And Keels is spelled with two E's and two L's. K-E-E-I-L-L-S. Prayingthekeels.org. You've been involved with this for a few years. Yes. So what is it that you love about it? What does it give to your spiritual life? I think it gives me time to pause because it's uh, walking at a different pace and in different environments. I mean, I love the people we meet. You know, the conversations that you have are very different on the Keels Week. I love the Isle of Man. I love the flora and the fauna. The bluebells are out. Uh, You'll see a lot of the gorse out. It's absolutely beautiful time of year to walk around areas of the Isle of Man that you seldom get a chance to go. 
And the nice thing about walking in, in a group is that everybody walks at different paces during the course of that walk. And so you fall into step with different people in the course of one walk, don't you? Yeah. And I mean, there's some people I see every year, but only on the Keels week. <laughs> There is a camaraderie, I think, that walking engenders, and particularly when you've got time to reflect with each other. It's that shared experience and meeting God in different ways, really. Catherine said that she appreciates the walks in Keels Week as a chance to pause in the busyness of life. For walk leader Phil Crane, these Bible verses sum up his feelings. Words from the Message version of the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 11. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to make a real rest. Walk with me, and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So these are some words written by an Australian called Michael Lunig. We pray for another way of being, another way of knowing. Across the difficult terrain of our existence, we have attempted to build a highway and in so doing have lost our footpath. God, lead us to our footpath. Lead us there where, in simplicity, we may move at the speed of natural creatures and feel the earth's love beneath our feet. Lead us there where, step by step, we may feel the movement of creation in our hearts. And lead us there where, side by side, we may feel the embrace of the common soul. Nothing can be loved at speed. God, lead us to the slow path, to the joyous insights of the pilgrim, another way of knowing, another way of being. Amen. I'm sure you heard the news a couple of days ago that the Venerable Patricia Hillis has been selected to become the next Bishop of Soder and Man, succeeding the Right Reverend Peter Eagles, who retired last October. It's customary for the Bishop-elect to actually be on the island when the announcement is made. So the Venerable Tricia was here with her husband Andrew just for the day on Thursday when she was interviewed by Beth Espy. The full conversation is available as a newscast on our website, manxradio.com. It's really interesting and I do encourage you to listen to it if you possibly can. But this morning I'd like to bring you just some extracts of the interview that I believe highlight some of the qualities that the Venerable Tricia will bring to this new stage in her ministry. The Venerable Tricia is no stranger to the island, having spent many holidays with her husband's family who live here. 
my family come from Malaysia originally, but I grew up in Lincolnshire, which is where my father's family are from. And for the last 30 or so years, I've lived in London. And so I'm used to both city and countryside. So that kind of blend of being country girl in the city is kind of my designation. I am a former social worker and I worked in local authorities, serving people in communities. And then for 20 or so years, I've been ordained as a priest. The Venerable Tricia is currently Archdeacon and Canon of Westminster, as well as Chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons, and clearly enjoys the huge variety of work that these two ministries involve. How did you come to consider the position over here then? I've been able to come to the island over the last 20 years or so, and I've used this term as a guest. But actually the sense of being able to come and be part of the community here and really to be known by people and to really get to know people. That's part of the attraction and a significant part of it. I think that sense of people who have a real understanding of who they are, their pride in their history and their culture is really significant. So to be able to come and and to be part of that and to help serve that community has been the draw. But it's not like a job interview. So the work that was done by the churches and others on the island, lots of people who joined in the consultation about what what is it we need next? Uh, what are we hoping for as the new bishop comes to us, building on all that's gone before? So that huge amount of work was put together into a sense of this is what we're looking for. And then I had some contact with someone saying, actually, we're wondering if this might be something you might want to consider. So at that point, you say, well, I'm happy to to be considered. Let's see what happens. And so it's a sort of an offering to say, let's explore this together. The announcement of your appointment is just the start of your journey. How do the next few months look like for you? Mm. The next known milestone is that I'll be consecrated on the 10th of October in York Minster. And so that, that at that point, I will be a bishop. Thereafter, I will be able to travel to the island and make a move and make this our actual home. So probably late October, hope to be arriving, if if not a little sooner than that. And we're waiting then to see when the installation will be at the cathedral. And that will be the formal launch, really, of me being not just a bishop, but the bishop here. And so it was really exciting, actually, to be in the cathedral earlier today and to see all the work that's going on and and the, the, the new floor and the work so yeah and in terms of how it feels for you personally making this transition becoming a bishop what are your main feelings about that I think it is about an opportunity to serve people and to come alongside people Something that's really important to me is people and all of us, whether we are part of a church or not, knowing that the church here on the island is as much theirs as it is mine. It does feel like a new beginning, but it also feels like returning to actually what's really important for me, that sense of service, of community, of sharing God's love in a way that's, that allows us to know that God God is for us, as in God's on our side. God is with us, no matter what we're going through. And then this last thing, that God is ahead of us. So actually, that means that some of the things we're, we're hoping for, aiming for, dreaming, that I believe God is already there and enabling those possibilities to come to fruition. So that's why I'm really excited about this move. For me, one of the most encouraging comments came at the end of the interview when Beth Espy asked the Bishop-elect how she is known now in her present role as Archdeacon of Westminster and what she'd like to be called once she becomes a bishop. Most people would normally call me Tricia and uh, in due time, you know, Bishop Tricia. But I have heard that there's this little moniker going around about Trish the Bish, which did make me roar with laughter. And I've said, oh, I so have to get that T-shirt. But I think the fact that if someone's talking to me at all, that's the key bit. I just want to be able to be known and to know, to be known by people. So, yeah, whatever you want to call me, just call me is the key bit. 
and I do get a real sense that Bishop-elect Tricia really does want to know and be known by us all. I understand that the Venerable Tricia will be back on the island at some point in June, and I do hope that she'll be able to join us on this programme then. But I'm afraid that's all that we have time for this week. So let's finish off with a look at our notice board. And it's not too late to enjoy exploring Onken's secret gardens, as 12 gardens, including Government House Gardens, will be open today from 11am to 4pm. Adult admission is £5 with no charge for accompanied children, but sorry, no dogs are allowed in the gardens. All monies raised will be donated to Sight Matters and Live at Home, and I think the easiest way to pick up a brochure is from either Sight Matters at Corin Court in Onken, and the Freedom Field there is one of the gardens for you to visit, or start your tour and buy a booklet at Abbeylands Chapel. The chapel will be decorated and they'll be serving light refreshments and there are two gardens nearby for you to visit, Abbeyland's House and Water's Edge Cottage. Just bear in mind that whilst the gardens are all open until 4pm, there's a service this afternoon in Abbeyland's Chapel at 3 o'clock, but visitors are most welcome to come and join in. Dolby Church on the West Coast are taking advantage of the lovely weather and invite you to a Pentecost pilgrimage and bring your own picnic on the beach tonight at 6 o'clock. The plan is to meet at 6 o'clock in Dolby Church and walk together to the beach at Neabil for a time of gathering and a little reflection. There'll be fire on the beach to sit around and a fire to cook on. So everyone's invited to bring whatever food and drinks that you'd like to eat or share. Something to sit on, utensils for cooking, just the cooking fire will be provided. There'll be a car going from the church to the beach to take everything that you need with you. Everyone's welcome. Bring your friends. And if you're not able to do the walk down to the beach, please do still meet at the church at six o'clock for the introduction and then feel free to drive on down after. Also tonight, the Mariners will be in Maroun Parish Church for a service starting at half past six, at which Reverend Canon Janice Ward will preach. And as usual, there'll be supper and community hymn singing afterwards. Looking to the week ahead and the Talis Consort are performing Birdsong, a programme of nature-inspired spring choral music. That's on Tuesday, May the 21st at half past seven in the Co-Cathedral of St Mary of the Isle in Hill Street here in Douglas. Admission to the concert is free and it'll be live streamed via St Mary's website, manxcatholic.org. And I'm afraid that's all that we've time for now, but I'll be back later in our virtual lounge tonight from nine o'clock onwards. Virtual comfortable chairs, hot drinks and virtual snacks. Virtually everything you'll need to round off your day. But the easy listening music and your requests and dedications are very real. And I'd love you to join me if you can. And so, until whenever we meet again, this is Judith saying thank you for listening and I wish you and those you love a blessed and peaceful week and a very good morning. (laughs) 